Imagine that your legs are clamped around a bull. The arena is filled with deafening cheers. The adrenaline pumps through your veins, and you find yourself starting to sweat. Your heart races as the gate bursts open, and the angry 1,500-pound beast underneath you comes to life, kicking and bucking its hardest. For years, you've been training for this moment, investing in your safety gear and working with top-notch coaches. But now, as you hang on to the raging bull with all your might, none of that matters, and all you can think about is making the buzzer and walking away somehow without getting hurt. In the world of professional bull riding, every second counts, and your skill is the difference between life and sometimes death. Throughout its history, the sport has seen its share of tragedies, with riders suffering life-altering injuries and even death. Bull riding has claimed the lives of over 20 professional riders, not to mention amateurs. The bull riding injury rate is approximately 10.3 times the rate of injury in American football, 13.3 times the rate of injury in ice hockey, and 1.56 times the rate of injury in boxing. But the most haunting aspect is the unspoken rule that no matter what happens, the ride must go on. If you browse through various websites offering guidance to aspiring bull riders, the costs will astound you, upwards of $50,000 a year. In addition, the equipment isn't cheap either. You'll need protective vests, chaps, and even a custom-made helmet, because when you're facing a massive, unpredictable animal, you'll definitely need all the protection you can get. So yeah, becoming a professional bull rider is a costly endeavor, but no matter how much you invest, no one can guarantee that you'll walk away unscathed or that you'll even walk away at all. The risks are high and the rewards are fleeting. But for those who dare to chase the eight-second dream, the thrill of the ride is worth every penny and every grueling second spent training. So, do you think you have the grit to climb atop a raging beast for an adrenaline-filled eight seconds? If you answer yes to that question, you might change your mind by the end of this video. Let's take a look at six of the top worst bull riding incidents in human history. I'm on a mission to hit 25,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. Some of these may shock you to the core, but you can also rest easy knowing some of the courageous cowboys on this list made it out alive with their fair share of lifelong injuries. Our first challenger is none other than Tough Hedeman. If you don't know about Tough, his name should tell you everything you need to know. He was a true grit cowboy and a legend amongst the bull riding rodeo, even conquering the mighty bodacious bull. It was this bull that was also responsible for his devastating injury. If you're like me and not familiar with Bodacious, here's a little introduction to one of the most feared bulls in rodeo. He was known for bucking so hard you could see his belly from the stands, and of the 135 riders who tried riding him, only eight of them ever cleared Bodacious. Most of the riders who failed were bucked off in the first second or two. Some say Bodacious is the reason riders now wear full face protection. As the clever beast learned how to throw his head back and headbutt riders in the face. His absolute strength and explosive power made Bodacious the most infamous bull ever to step hooves into the rodeo ring. He became known as the world's most dangerous bull and also the greatest bull ever to buck. Tough Hedeman was one of the few men who actually cleared Bodacious on one occasion, but in his tragic incident, he wasn't as lucky. Richard Neal Tuff Hedeman was born on March 2, 1963, and had a career spanning some of the greatest years of bull riding. He traveled the circuits with his close friends, Cody Lambert, Jim Sharp, Clint Branger, Ty Murray, and none other than Lane Frost, who tragically lost his life to a bull in 1983. On three different occasions, Tuff won the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association Bull Riding World Championship in 1986, 1989, and 1991. He also won a championship in 1993 for the now defunct Bull Riders Only organization. By 1993, Tuff had garnered over a million dollars in career earnings, but a neck injury that same year at the National Finals Rodeo kept him out of the circuit for the entire year of 1994. On top of all his achievements, 
Tuff was instrumental in co-founding the Professional Bull Riders Association and won the 1995 PBR World Championship. Stephen Baldwin even played him in the 1994 movie Eight Seconds, about the life of Lane Frost, where Tuff was the stunt double for his own character. Tuff's terrible accident occurred the same year he won the 1995 PBR World Championship. It was at the helm of the notorious bull, Bodacious. The Beast had been out of competition for some time after an injury, but now he was back and more fearsome than ever. Plus, he had developed a new headbutt tactic, so he could easily remove riders with one foul jerk of his monstrous body. If you think you are a bull rider, Bodacious is the kind of bull that will make you leave the sport forever. Tuff had a history with Bodacious. In 1993, he managed to become one of the few riders to clear the bull, scoring an almost perfect score of 95. However, when his next ride with Bodacious came around two years later, Tuff was, in his own words, overconfident and underprepared. The chute slammed open and Bodacious broke out of the gates with the force of nature coursing through his body. He bucked and spun wildly, repeating sending his head upwards to get the brave rider off his back. In a split-second moment, the bull's head connected with Tuff's face with a massive impact. He was immediately wrenched off the wild beast, connecting against the ground with dead weight. The bullfighters surrounded Tuff to protect him from further damage, but the worst of it was already done. Tuff was let out of the arena. According to him, his face was numb, but he didn't realize the extent of the injury until he saw that everyone he passed looked at him like he was the devil. The life force left his face as he was led away from a near-fatal accident. Almost every bone in his face was shattered by the power of Bodacious. He lived through this insane injury, but he lost his sense of smell and taste, and after hours of reconstructive surgery, much of his facial expression had been lost. He spent nearly two months recuperating, but true to his name, he got back in the saddle in the sport that almost cost him his life. Later that same year at the NFR, Tuff drew Bodacious again, and fate waited to see what would happen. But Tuff's son had asked him never to ride Bodacious again. So after Tuff drew Bodacious, he turned the bull loose without a rider as the chutes opened, his sign of respect both to the bull and to his son. Tuff received a standing ovation from the crowd for knowing where his limits were. Tuff had been retired from bull riding in 1999 after he herniated a disc from a previous spinal injury. So, do you think you would have the guts to hold on to Bodacious for the wildest eight seconds of your life? Next up, we have Bo Schroeder. This man was as tough as they come. He sustained numerous injuries in the arena, including several broken ribs and a broken right leg on three different occasions. However, these weren't enough to deter him from the sport of bull riding, as many of us would be. Bo got an early start in bull riding at the tender age of four. According to Bo, when I was young, probably around four or five, my dad would take me out to my grandpa's rodeo arena, he said. I would get on calves and practice. I watched videos of rodeo and bull riding and always wanted to be a bull rider. As Bo grew, he got more invested in the bucking bull, and by the age of 13, he was competing in the Nacogdoches Pro Rodeo and Steer Shows. This young start meant Bo knew he could make a living out of it. His career flourished. In 2007, he became a professional Rodeo Cowboys Association rider, and he traveled from arena to arena, competing in an average of 100 rodeos a year. And he had the support of his entire family behind him. The rodeo was something they were all passionate about. The bulls truly ran in the family. His sister, Nikki Duke, ran barrels at youth rodeos up until high school, and his father, Punky Schroeder, had always been a part of that too. Punky rode and fought bulls, and he learned this from his father, Icky Schroeder, who produced rodeos and youth rodeos and still raises bulls to this day. Bo became a national finals rodeo qualifier and a top-tier rider, with 219 successful rides out of 615 attempts at his career. With this kind of background, not even the severity of a traumatic accident was enough to keep him off the back of a bull. Regardless, Bo will remember March 24, 2013 for the rest of his life. He was competing in the Fort Mojave Classic Extreme Bulls event. Bo held his own against the gigantic black bull, bucking and swaying elegantly as the bull tried to throw him off. But Bo began to lose his grip, and the force of the beast flung him forward. 
The bull's horns impacted his body repeatedly. Bo was immediately knocked unconscious and fell to the ground. It was clear to everyone there that Bo had sustained bad injuries, but no one knew just how bad they were. When he came to, he told the emergency personnel that he couldn't breathe, so they put him on an oxygen inhaler. This is where they realized just how much damage the horn had done. His lungs would not inhale any oxygen, so they rushed him to the hospital. They discovered that his lungs had collapsed and his trachea had been torn from the force of the bull's horn. The doctors inserted a tube to inflate his lungs, and if they had been off by a third of an inch, Bo wouldn't have made it through the surgery. After a stay in intensive care, Bo had to wear a tracheostomy tube for six weeks, being completely unable to speak. Despite these insane injuries, he still went back to the grit of the rodeo arena and continued to ride some of the most raging bulls around. He's still known for his fearless and determined riding style, and he's been praised for his ability to stay on even the most difficult bulls. Even after his injury a year later, he went on to win first place at the Southwestern Exposition and Livestock Show in Fort Worth in 2014. He has respect for the craft, unlike many riders. He said he does this because, I love the adrenaline rush, man-fighting beast, I guess. I have respect for that animal and what he can do. My focus is on me and him, nothing else. Now, can you imagine the courage it takes to get back on a bull after an injury like this? Would you take a life-threatening injury as a sign to change your career path or a bump in the road that challenges you to continue? Unfortunately, not all riders are this lucky. Some of them get on the bull for the last time, and some never walk on their own two feet again. Brent Thurman was a bull rider who had a permanent smile stuck on his face. Some people said they didn't know anyone who liked to smile so much with their two front teeth missing. He wasn't just known as a world-class champion bull rider, but also as a motivator of life. Brent was a man who got along with everyone he met and always took the opportunity to educate those younger than him. In his school days, he did anything that was in front of him, whether it was football, basketball, track and bay fishing, or professional golf. Brent's athleticism shone through in everything he did. He started bull riding while many of us were still picking our noses at the age of eight. As he developed his own style, many bull riders commended his unique style of riding, where he would keep his hand much lower than most riders and use his legs for support and stability more than his upper body. This technique won him many victories. When his professional year came to a close in 1989, Brent was ranked among the top 30 bull riders in the world. You must know that over the years, bull riders are bound to pick up many small injuries. It's almost a guarantee. So, unfortunately, Brent experienced a lot of injuries that prevented him from qualifying for the national finals sooner. But in 1993, he finally qualified for his first national finals rodeo. Little did he know, this was the path to his downfall. He finished fifth in the final standings that year and 13th in the 1994 Crown Royal World Standings. His next tournament proved to be his last. Brent was not just passionate about bull riding, he was passionate about people. And he wanted to see those around him succeed. This compassionate drive made him volunteer in special rodeos, competitions for mentally and physically disabled youth, and judged bull riding events in his spare time. He became involved with Miss Candy Jones, the director of the Program for Special Needs Children at Covington Middle School, located in Austin, Texas. He served at this school as a volunteer, working with the children to improve their reading and horticulture skills. This program became near and dear to Brent's heart, and he wanted to organize a championship bull riding competition with the proceeds going to this school. This shows Brent's humanity and his passion for helping people. He was close to everyone around him. He loved children, loved new challenges, and always found humor and joy in life. So. Let's go back to Brent's tragic ride in the 1994 National Finals Rodeo. Brent shot out the gates with his bull in hand. With his unique technique, Brent seemed to have the bull under his complete control. However, four seconds in, Brent got bucked off. What seemed like a normal end to the madness suddenly turned into a disaster as Brent became tangled in his leather rigging. He got caught up in the whirlwind of the bull and pulled underneath his mighty hooves. The bull fatally trampled Brent, turning his lively ride into a shocking tragedy. He never regained consciousness. 
This proved to be the last time he would ever step foot into the rodeo arena. Brent passed away in December of 1994. That day, the world was robbed of an empathetic soul who took the time out of his life to help others. Brent Thurman is the only cowboy to ever die at the National Finals Rodeo, and he will always be remembered by the community. Those he touched will remember the loss of his life, but there are some riders who have to deal with loss in a completely different way. Jerome Danger Davis is one such bull rider. His nickname is a testament to just how far he was willing to go to best the terrifying bulls these cowboys brazenly climb aboard. Jerome was born on August 10, 1972 in Colorado Springs. He followed in his father's footsteps and started bull riding at a very young age. He quickly showed natural talent, and everyone knew what the future held for him, a successful bull riding career. Like most bull riders, he had fast-paced, adrenaline-filled hobbies. These included motocross racing, hunting, and NASCAR, with some fishing for a relaxing balance. As a child, whenever he was asked what he wanted to be, Jerome always said, I want to be a bull rider. Jerome rode his first bull at 11, but didn't manage to clear the full eight seconds. Yet, he knew at that point he was going to be a bull rider. From then on, he participated in 12 to 15 rodeos a year. This number continued to increase over the years. Jerome won his first buckle as a freshman in high school. If you don't know what that is in bull riding, the buckle is normally awarded to the best rider in any championship. He continued to climb through the ranks of the best bull riders, securing a victory as the North Carolina State Rodeo Champion in 1990. He went on to win as a freshman again, this time in college. He took the win in the National Intercollegiate Rodeo Association's Bull Riding Championship. After freshman year of college in 1992, Jerome decided to take his bull riding to the next level. He qualified for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association and went pro. He started to get noticed, and in 1993, Jerome was cast in the aforementioned movie Eight Seconds as a stunt double for Luke Perry. His shining moment came in 1995, when he won the PRCA World Bull Riding Championship. From this point on, Jerome continued to blaze his way through the PCRA and PBR tournaments, ranking in the top five year after year. On March 14, 1998, Jerome's winning streak finally came to an end. Jerome Danger Davis was atop a humongous bull that would make the ground tremble as he walked. They left the shoots like two dancing partners, gracefully performing the moves they had memorized. In a tragic twist of fate, Jerome was thrown from the bull, breaking his neck as he slammed against the ground. Amazingly, Jerome somehow survived this brutal injury, but was left with the permanent reminder of the dangers of bull riding. Jerome Davis was paralyzed from the chest down. However, Jerome is a bull riding cowboy with a heart of steel and a mind of resilience. He did not let this defeat keep him down. He was awarded the Ring of Honor during the 1998 PBR Finals and continues to live happily with his wife, Tiffany. Jerome still continues to contribute to the bull riding community as a stock contractor, contracting some of the toughest bulls into the circuit. Safety is always a concern for those involved in bull riding, but even with the best safety gear, there are some incidents that shouldn't happen, like the case of Amadeu Campos Silva. He was born in Brazil in 1998 and grew up with a love for rodeo and bull riding. He began riding bulls at a young age and quickly gained recognition for his natural talent and fearlessness in the ring. In 2017, Amadeu joined the Professional Bull Riders Tour in the United States, moving to Sunset, Texas, with his family to pursue his dream of becoming a professional bull rider. He quickly made a name for himself on the circuit, earning a reputation as a fierce competitor and a fan favorite. On August 29, 2021, Amadeu Campos Silva took his last ride during a PBR Velocity Tour event in Fresno, California. The 22-year-old was competing in the championship round when he attempted to ride a bull named Classic Man. During his ride, Silva was thrown off the bull and hit the ground. As he was attempting to stand up, the bull turned around and charged him, striking Silva in the chest with its horn. The impact caused severe internal injuries, including a severed aorta. Medical personnel immediately rushed to Silva's aid and transported him to Community Regional Medical Center in Fresno, 
Despite the best efforts of the medical team, Silva succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead at the hospital. Now, we all know that you have to accept a level of consequence when you are doing something extreme. We either live a stationary life or we take risks to turn the mundane into the exciting. Many of the gentlemen on this list lived such lives, accepting they could be left with lifelong injury or even death. However, the most tragic of incidents were those when a chance of life was ended before it could truly begin. This rings true in the case of Denim Bradshaw. The young teenage cowboy wanted nothing more than to climb on a raging bull. He wanted to paint his name as a professional bull rider in the rodeo halls of fame. In today's day and age, deaths are few and far between. Strict regulations mean riders wear protective gear on their face, chest, and any other part of their body, so when a death does occur, it's even more tragic. We're living in modern times, so much of our protection has been developed and redeveloped through years of hard testing in the field. With an expectation of protection, we don't expect the worst. However, accidents will always happen. And this is what happened to Denim Bradshaw. On January 28, 2023, Denim was riding a bull for the first time at the Rafter K Rodeo Winter Series in King, North Carolina. Everyone felt the excitement of the young man, as riding a bull for the first time is likely the most exhilarating few seconds you have ever experienced. With joy in his heart, Denim climbed atop the bull. He didn't realize that his intense passion would lead to a tragic end. During his final ride, Denim mounted a bull named Rocket Ride. As the chute opened, the bull began to buck violently. Denim could be seen having the time of his life in those few seconds, which felt like an eternity to the person on top of the beast. Rocket Ride threw Denim off within seconds. The young rider landed on the ground, and before he could get to safety, the bull stomped on his chest, causing severe injuries. The entire crowd watched in silence as EMTs worked on Denim's young body. Many of his fellow bull riders took a bow as they tried to save the boy's life. Unfortunately, their efforts were in vain. Emergency medical personnel rushed him to Atrium Healthwake Forest Baptist Medical Center. Despite their best efforts, Denim succumbed to his injuries and passed away later that evening. Denim Bradshaw may have had a short life, but he certainly passed doing what he loved. Tributes poured in for the young cowboy from the entire bull riding community. His mother, Shannon Bowman, expressed her grief and pride in her son on Facebook, writing, I'm so proud of your bravery and your courage. My little cowboy, I will love and miss you so much, and I know God will take care of you. Denim had recently adventured into the world of bull riding and fell in love, according to a post on a GoFundMe page set up to raise funds for his funeral expenses. The post went on to describe his passion for the sport, saying, The boots, the cowboy hats, and those big belt buckles, he loved it all. He got to ride his first bull on January 28th, and his excitement was palpable. None of us could believe that this first ride would cause his death, and we are beyond devastated. Now imagine how you would feel if you were a bull rider with a front row seat to all these courageous but tragic stories. The hours of training, the money you spent, and the gear you collected. Tell me in the comments what you think about these six bull riding disasters.